Hey, what's up, Shift Nation? If you're looking for appointment booking tips for financial advisors, this is the video for you. Now, this video is actually a continuation of another video that I did where I talked about an introduction of a couple that are advisors that are getting over 90 appointments a month. And in this video, we're gonna dive even deeper into how they're booking appointments with a live Q&A. So this was a Q&A that I shot with them in a webinar just yesterday where we basically had almost like 400 advisors there asking them questions on how they were booking appointments from their channel and other techniques they were using in order to grow. I think you're gonna love this video. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over my screens to show you the interviews. Now this, this was kind of an in-depth session. There was a lot of questions about booking appointments, a lot of questions about conversions, a lot of questions about strategies. So I'm actually gonna break this up into multiple parts because otherwise it's, it's just gonna be too long. So I'm gonna give you the best questions that were asked about booking appointments right now. And then at the end of the video, I'll let you know how you can keep the journey going and actually dive deeper. So, all right, let's get started here. Let's jump right into booking appointments for advisors. And here's the Q and A. Uh, Bert, how often should we post on YouTube and how do you find the keywords? As Okay, everyone asks this. You, and what the, the reality needs to be is you have to post what you can keep up with. I'm going to say that again. You have to post with what you can keep up with. It doesn't matter right now as you're getting started what the YouTube algorithm says, because it's going to say five to seven days a week. It, it wants you to post as much as possible, but you have to post with what you can keep up with. Mm -hmm. And I, we say that because Darius and I started with four days a week. Then we dropped to three. Then we did two. Then we did one. Like what we did, we stayed consistent in the beginning, but then uh, the cadence changed for us. And that messed up our views because YouTube didn't see us as consistent. So you you have to post what you can commit to. If it's one a week, ride that sucker and, <laughs> until, until in, into town. Uh, two days a week, you have to do what works for you. If, if you want your channel to grow and you look at your statistics, YouTube is going to say post seven days a week. That's what YouTube wants. But you have to find a happy medium between seven days a week and where you're comfortable. Great point, because YouTube is greedy for content, right? The yes. more videos you post, the better YouTube does. Initially, how do you get views with no AdWords or not buying traffic? You, you do basically the hack that we did. Um, what we did initially is uh, James Netherly was our very first, he was kind of like our inspiration to creating video. So what we did is we, just like we showed you, we showed his highest uh, highest views videos, and we created similar titles. What we should have did is created the exact same title so that we can be on his uh, recommended. But what you do is you find other channels talking about the exact same thing that you're talking about. Look at their um, how many views they have, and within about a, a ten month time frame, and create the exact same video using the exact same title, just with your own spin on it. And that helps you get um, views and recognition a lot faster because what happens is you show up on the recommended on the right side of the screen. But but the other thing too, I would say is in, in the course, we show you the exact formula that we use for how to target specific keywords. And the other thing too, is when you're just getting started to your point, your people may not look at any of your videos. So literally what Darius and I were doing was on Facebook, on our personal post, we were saying, oh, yeah. Hey, we just started a YouTube channel. Can everyone please go uh, subscribe to our channel and watch a few of our videos. Anytime that we posted a video, we were sending it to our friends and family. We were sending it to our contact list. We were putting it on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever we had just to try to get a few views. So you have to do that until you can get some traction before YouTube starts recognizing you. Um, and, and it's just making sure that you understand that. All right. Do you guys use a teleprompter? And if so, what do you use? No, we don't. We don't Got use it. a teleprompter at all. And and Thomas, we have used a teleprompter. Let, let, let's be honest. But that, it screwed us up. <laughs> yeah, that there's apps you can get on your phone um, where it'll it'll project the, the words. But really what happens, Thomas, is follow me, right? So we're just having a conversation. Now, all of a sudden, get started to join now. Join us at adv.com forward slash YouTube for, do you get where I'm going? I now became car, the Carmen, the robot and no longer genuine. So that that's what happens with teleprompters is one, we become insecure about our speech when we know what we want to say, right? Do you have a teleprompter when you, when you speak to a client? No. 
So you don't need a teleprompter when you're creating a video, right? Because again, we're, we're human. We're just trying to have a conversation. That's all we want to do. And you know the information. So stop second guessing and thinking that you don't know the information. If I understand the need for a teleprompter, but all you really need is, is the script that we're giving everyone that's still hanging on with us. And, 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 and I don't want you to think of it as a script that you're writing everything word for word. It's really just an outline for you, to, for, for you to stay on track and that, so that you don't ramble. So it's just like point one, point two, point three. These are the things that I want to hit. And you can literally put it down on your table in front of you. And it's okay if you gl glance to it so that you can make sure you stay on, on track. Um, but we, we, long story short, we don't recommend that you use a teleprompter. When you say to focus on a niche, do you mean a niche product or a niche audience? Um, a niche audience uh audience it and, can, and product. It, can be both. it can be both that's yeah. a good question see is this working for chinese speaking advisors what do you think so oh my goodness yes I'm, i missed oh, the question for people who speak chinese so uh, oh my God. I can't even begin to tell you. We, we, I, and the reason I'm so emotional about this is because we just, we, there's a channel that we watch that we, we use as our inspiration. And he just started a, a, a Spanish channel and he doesn't even speak Spanish. His stuff is dubbed. So um, we keep talking about a niche. It, this is, this is a niche. You speak Chinese. We don't, <laughs> you can reach millions of people that we could not so you better go go start speaking chinese on your youtube videos oh yeah yeah i mean and Daisy, then get it uh dubbed in english <laughs> i mean it's just it's it's amazing what you can do online can you use this approach on other social media channels like rumble you know what i'm honestly not super familiar with what with rumble are you jd no yeah uh, um can you give me a little bit of background uh, with that? What, what are you? What is the approach that you're thinking you would do with so, Rumble? So one of the, one of the reasons why we use uh, YouTube is because people search on YouTube for information. Mm -hmm. Other uh, places like uh, TikTok, for example, they're not searching for education; they're searching for entertainment. Um, same thing with like uh, Facebook or Instagram. Instagram people have a very short attention span and is mostly geared towards uh, pictures and not necessarily content on how to make a purchasing decision. So that's why we kind of cater towards uh, YouTube because people actually go on YouTube as a search engine to find information, which is what we have. We have a, a, a product or service that people need to understand and be educated about. So that's why we like uh, YouTube. Yeah. For those of us with multiple lines of products, right? Would you, oh, we got this so many times in our, in our training. Would you recommend that we choose one and niche it down when we start our videos or should we do all? What do you guys recommend? I recommend you start with one so that you can be the subject matter expert at one thing, because when you start doing multiple things then people confuse you as to what you're an expert at. So start with one, use that, um, and then start branching off. Because that's, that's exactly what we did. We started off with uh, insurance, uh, infinite banking. Now we very rarely mention infinite banking. Yeah, we're talking about passive income and all sorts of things. So 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 build your channel, build, build the, the audience, and then you can start talking about other subjects. Right. Uh, related to it, would it be defeating the purpose to have multiple YouTube channels, like a comprehensive one, one on topic one, one on topic two? Yeah. Hey, I, it, if you got the energy to do that, by all means, but I think you probably want to start with one because like I, like we said earlier, YouTube is going to want more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. There's no fill in YouTube's cup. Yeah. And then think about it too, because then you have to be consistent on all of those channels that you just opened up. So a lot of times what we see what YouTubers do is they get a substantial audience. And then in those videos, they go, oh, check out my net, my uh, new YouTube channel where mm -hmm. I go more in depth or check out my YouTube video full of shorts where it's just two to three minute videos. So again, build your, build your channel, build your credibility, and then branch off to other channels if you want to. All right. Can we do videos on two subjects that are still associated like a business profit help and then exit strategies. Do you do two different channels or just expand your info and add both keywords? We Similar just related to the other one. Yeah, yeah, we just expand our inform information and over time we'll mention it on just the same channel because yeah. it's still all related. 
Yeah, absolutely. So that was some pretty incredible stuff, right? I mean, I hope you took a lot of notes. If you have any other questions for us, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear what was your takeaway or did we miss something that we didn't cover about booking appointments for financial advisors or insurance advisors? And I'll be happy to help you guys out in there. So go ahead and drop your comments. Don't forget to hit subscribe and smash that bell so that you don't miss out on any updates uh, that we're doing here at Advisors. We're publishing videos all the time filled with tips on booking appointments, uh, email subject lines, how to grow your practice as an advisor, how to be a virtual advisor, all that good stuff. And if you don't see a video on something you need, go ahead and let us know as well in the comments. We'll be happy to make one for you. All right, now uh, in you should see somewhere here, the next video, it will be a continuation of the deep dive that where we were grilling the Brits on how to book appointments for advisors. So if uh, you want to keep the journey going, go ahead and click on that video and I'll see you on that one as well. All right, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, smash that bell, and I'll see you out there. Bye for now.